For a given 1.5 mile section of road, two 12 foot wide lanes are being studied to review their pollutant contribution to a local water source. Local regulations limit pollutant concentrations in runoff to two milligrams per liter for inorganic contaminants and three milligrams per liter for organic contaminants. Due to local traffic patterns, the pollutants in the following table are accumulating on the road at the provided rates. From the information given, would either the inorganic or organic compounds cause a violation of local water quality standards during a one inch storm? Assume the entire rainfall becomes runoff and that no other sources contribute to the receiving water body. So this problem has a long problem statement, but it's essentially asking us to find the concentrations of the inorganic contaminants and organic contaminants respectively, and then compare them to the provided limits. Let's do this in the following steps. First, let's note that Hg, mercury, and Pb, lead, are our inorganic contaminants. Nitrogen, N, and phosphorus, P, are our organic contaminants. Both the civil and environmental reference manuals have periodic tables in them if you need to look these up, and both manuals also mention that mercury is Hg in the conversion factor section. So let's get into our steps. Step one is going to be find the inorganic wash-off pollutant mass. So first we will sum up our inorganic contaminants. Mercury is going to be 0 0.032 and lead is going to be 0 0.18. These are in units of kilograms per mile day. Multiplying by the number of days since our last rain event, since that will be the amount of time that the pollutants have been accumulating, and then multiplying again by the length of the roadway, which is 1.5 miles. And then finally, we could go one step further right now and also figure out what the wash-off percentage is. So that's going to be 90 over 100. And this will calculate out to 0 0.859 kilograms. Step two, we can perform the same steps for the organic wash-off pollutant mass. So just up here, if it wasn't clear, miles cancels, days cancel, leaving us just with kilograms. So for the organic compounds, we will do the same thing. Nitrogen, 0 0.25. Phosphorus, 0 0.19. Kilograms per mile day times three days times 1.5 miles times 0 0.9, same as the number up here, for the wash off. And that's going to give us 1.782 kilograms of pollutant mass. Step three, we want to calculate the volume of runoff from the road during a one inch storm. So we have a one inch storm and let's convert this to liters since that's what we need to compare our final results in later. So we have one inch times one foot over 12 inches times 1.5 miles of road times 
5,280 feet in a mile times two lanes given in the problem statement, each lane being 12 feet wide, times 7.48 gallons per cubic foot, since right now we have foot, foot, and foot. And then finally, times 3.79 liters per gallon. And if we do all of this math out, we will see that we are left with just liters, inches cancel, feet one, two, and three will cancel with cubic feet. This should be 12 feet per lane, so lane and lane cancel, miles cancel, and everything, and then gallons cancel. So all we have left are liters here. And that's going to be about 449.051 liters. So step four is going to be finding the inorganic concentration using the pollutant mass and the volume of runoff. So 0 0.859 kg over 449051 liters and then 10 to the 6 milligrams in 1 kilogram to complete our unit conversion and this will give us about 1.91 milligrams per liter we can see that this is below the limit specified in the problem statement for inorganic contaminants for step five, we're going to find the organic concentration. So that's going to be 1.782 kilograms over 4.49051 liters, 10 to the sixth milligrams over one kilogram. And this is going to come out to 3.97 milligrams per liter. We can see that this is above the legal limit specified in the problem statement for organic contaminants. So the question's asking, would either the inorganic or organic compounds cause a violation during a storm? And our answer is that the organic compounds would cause a violation, which is our second answer here. So this problem has no real tricks to it. You just have to perform some basic math and unit conversions, as well as recognize which pollutants are organic and which are inorganic. And that's all it takes to solve this problem.